In this chapter of iteration theory, we're going to go over the matrix in more detail. As you remember, each node in the matrix stands for a single bit of space-time, a cubic Planck length in size and a Planck second in length. And these nodes are self-replicating. They make copies of themselves. And to visualize this, we're just going to do two copies. So every node just makes two copies of itself so that uh, the screen doesn't get too busy. But of course, in reality, this would be a bazillion copies. The lines between the nodes are just representing inheritance. It's just showing that these children nodes came from the parent nodes. This is actually confusing, considering there's no actual such parent pointer in reality. So maybe a better way to represent this is without the lines. Just show the nodes. So as you can see, each generation is just generated by the generation before. But in reality, there are references between nodes. Children nodes, or nodes of the same generation, have references to other children nodes. And these could be represented as a red line between the nodes. Notice the red lines are only between nodes in the same generation. And also notice there's a lot of red lines with nodes that are close to each other, and fewer that go kind of a long way away. These red lines represent entanglement. They show pieces of space-time that are logically connected to other pieces of space-time. That is, when a node makes a copy of itself, it can only use the information in itself and the other entangled nodes that it has references to. These references are what give things separation, both in time and in space. Blocks of space-time that have lots of references between them seem close in distance and in time. But the farther they are, the less you have of direct references. You have to go through other nodes to get to that information. And this is why things that are a long way away take a long time to get information or a lot of iterations to move, because they have to go from node to node to node.